In this video, I'm talking about the truth about inflammation, what's actually happening in our body when we have inflammation, and how do we actually turn it off in our system. And so inflammation really gets a bad rap in our society. In fact, you know, some of the most commonly prescribed medications are anti-inflammatory medications or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, a class we call NSAIDs. We also have steroids to help reduce inflammation. Um, and of course, in, in natural health, we talk about anti-inflammatory nutrition plans and anti-inflammatory herbs and supplements. And so we know that inflammation though is actually a life-saving mechanism in our body. It's a physiological process that literally is designed to save our lives. You see our ancestors, when they had some sort of trauma, like for example, they fell out of a tree and you know, they would get physical trauma, or even if it was an emotional trauma, the body actually got ready to try to prevent any sort of infection from getting into the bloodstream and killing us. So, for example, when they were had some sort of tissue trauma, let's say they got hit by a spear or bitten by an animal or something along those lines, um, bacteria would get into the bloodstream and those bacteria were potentially pathogens, right? And so they would, they would tra travel up and the body said, okay, wow, we gotta do something about this because if they got into the lungs and created pneumonia, or they got into our brain and, create, and caused encephalitis or our nervous system and created meningitis, that would kill us quickly. In fact, more people have been killed throughout the history of mankind from some sort of a systemic infection than from anything else. When people got killed in war, it was usually actually the infection they got from whatever the, the wound was that killed them. And so this is why our body responds to a high stress load, trauma, physical trauma, or any sort of high stress load as a potential risk factor for getting an infection that could kill us quickly. So, you know, back when we were more tribal, uh, you know, if you had a conflict with, let's say, you know, a tribal leader or something along those lines, oftentimes it ended up in a fight. And that could cause a tissue injury, right? Which could cause an infection. Or you could get ostracized, which could lead to, you know, a whole lot of problems. And so, the way that we deal with stress and, and all of these different factors is our body drives up inflammation in the body. So inflammation, again, designed to make sure we don't die quickly. However, we've gotta get inflammation under control as quickly as possible and get back to a state of balance and homeostasis. And what happens in our society today is we're constantly overloading our system with biological stressors, like for example, infections, or um, nutrient deficiencies, bad sleep, bad circadian rhythm, um, psychological stressors like mental emotional stress. We've got chemical stressors coming from pesticides, herbicides, all different types of chemicals. And then physical stressors, right? We might have trauma or something along those lines. And all of those things bombard our system and create a high, what we call allostatic load. The overall load on our system that our body has to adapt to. And if it uh, if that load gets too strong and we can't adapt effectively, it's gonna trigger an inflammatory cycle and ultimately it can be a self-perpetuating inflammatory cycle. See, when we have a tissue injury, right, we release something called damps and PAMPs. Damps are what we call uh, damage-associated molecular patterns, so from tissue damage, for, for example. So it's our own self-tissue and it's these molecular patterns uh, involved with that. And then PAMPs are pathogen associated molecular patterns. And so both of those will now bind to what we call pattern recognition receptors. You may have heard of things like toll-like receptor, node-like receptor. These are becoming more and more talked about in the scientific literature. You also have one called C-type lectin-like uh, receptor. And so those will all trigger the major inflammatory amplifying uh, transcription factor. We call that nuclear factor kappa beta. When NFKB, when that gets activated, it's like this massive alarm in the body, right? And so, you know, think about it like, for example, a city that's being overrun with criminals. And so if there's one criminal that's causing problems, right, one or two cops will go and, you know, take care of them and arrest him. But if you have a whole, if you have a riot going on, now that triggers an alarm in the city and now all the police officers come running out, right, to try to stop the riot. And so let's say those police officers hadn't slept well, they're a little irritable, and on top of that, they're blindfolded, right? Now they're gonna run out and they feel, they feel threatened and so 
they start shooting, right? Now, they may shoot some of the bad guys, but they also may shoot good people and, you know, damage a lot of innocent bystanders as well as, you know, structures, innocent structures that weren't a part of it. And so this is kind of what happens in our immune system. If our immune system is not balanced and the NFKB pathway is elevated, now we start creating kind of this widespread inflammatory cycle. We want a really balanced, calm immune system. We want an immune system that's really calm, doesn't overreact, right? Doesn't underreact, but gives the appropriate response to whatever the, um, you know, the threat is. And so normally that's how a healthy, well-functioning person should be. And that, that immune response should be for as short amount of time as possible because it's very energy demanding for our system. And that's why when we get the flu or something like that, we get really tired because our body needs to divert as much energy as possible into healing and repairing and making sure that the virus or whatever the pathogen is doesn't continue to replicate. So the NFKB pathway is a self-amplifying cycle. So it just continues to trigger inflammation, inflammation, inflammation throughout the whole body, right? Until we turn it off, okay? So we've gotta be able to turn NFKB off. Now, what are the main things that drive NFKB? I talked about the damps and pamps, right? Damage associated molecular patterns as well as the pathogen associated molecular patterns. That would be coming from bacteria or parasites. For example, the outer cell wall of what we call gram-negative bacteria release something called lipopolysaccharides or LPS. It's one of the major drivers of inflammation. And so we all have gram-negative bacteria in our system, but if they are release, if they are getting into the bloodstream, or if they their cell components, their their breakdown products are getting into the into the bloodstream at high levels, that's going to trigger this self-amplifying cycle of inflammation, this massive alarm that goes off in our body, driving inflammation. We also have high oxidative stress, and that oxidative stress is taking place within the cell. So inside the cell, the actual mitochondria, right, is dealing with, and all the different proteins are dealing with oxidative stress. Now normally we have intracellular antioxidants, in particular three well-studied ones, catalase, um, superoxide, dismutase, and glutathione peroxidase. And so these all help to downregulate intracellular stress, oxidative stress, or rusting from inside the cell. And so normally we should be dealing, we should have some oxidative stress, but we should be able to neutralize it and keep it under control. When we can't, because either we're not producing enough of these intracellular antioxidants, or the cell is just bombarded with high amounts of oxidative stress, maybe from a virus, maybe because our cell is stuck in glycation, it's not able to burn fat. We know fat is a um, more cleaner energy source where it would produce a lot of cellular energy without a lot of oxidative stress, whereas glucose or sugar we can produce quick energy, but we also produce a lot of oxidative stress. And so if we're metabolically inflexible, we can't burn fat well, we're gonna produce more oxidative stress. If the cell structure is under a, lot, a high oxidative load, then that's gonna trigger NFKB. And then the other thing is, on the outer cell wall of the cell, right, we have a lipid bilayer of all the cells, all the cell membranes. And we also produce something called prostaglandins, from out here, and these are lipid molecules that are, act like hormones, okay, and they are cell-to-cell -cell communication, they help to drive different activity. And if we're eating a lot of bad fats, for example, a lot of omega-6 fats, uh, things like seed oils, okay, grain-fed animal products as opposed to grass-fed, uh, that's gonna have a lot of high omega-6 fats in them. And if we're, if we're eating a diet that, that has a lot of these omega-6, we, we end up producing very pro-inflammatory prostaglandins, prostaglandin E2 in particular, which drives more inflammation, triggers the NFKB pathway. And so whereas if you were to eat a lot more omega-3s and create a, the proper ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, then we'll produce more of the prostaglandin E3, which keeps inflammation under control. So that's one element. So these are made major precursors driving NFKB, okay? And ultimately, all these things lead to a cell, cell danger response. Now, the cell danger response, we should have a complete healing cycle. If we don't, if we get stuck in one of the key areas of the cell danger response, that's gonna, again, trigger this self-amplifying cycle of inflammation. So. A lot of stuff right there, a lot of information. How do we address it? Well, we gotta support our bodies 
natural ability to adapt, heal, and repair. How do we do that? Sleep. Sleep is really key. Really good quality sleep down regulates NFKB, right? Down regulates all the inflammatory cycles in our body and triggers hormones like human growth hormone, which signal healing, right? Which really start to repair tissues, repair the, the, the overall structure of our body, whether it's our gut, whether it's our muscle tissue, you know, things that, are that have been damaged. HGH, human growth hormone, really helps trigger the repair process there. So that's key. We get a large amount of HGH while we're sleeping, particularly if our circadian rhythm is balanced and functioning well. Proper light exposure, sunlight, getting good sun exposure helps downregulate NFKB, helps, of course, increase vitamin D. Vitamin D is this really powerful, um, what we call pro-hormone. It shouldn't even be labeled a vitamin, but it has really powerful anti-inflammatory effects or what we call immune modulating effects. So I say anti-inflammatory because if we have a high firing inflammatory process, an immune modulator or immune balancer will bring inflammation down. If we're not producing inflammation and we should be, it will bring it up in order to get rid of pathogens, in order to allow our body to be able to adapt and heal. So it's an immune modulator. So getting good sun exposure, things like red light or infrared therapy can be really helpful here. That helps downregulate NFKB, downregulate inflammation. So getting the proper light exposure, very important movement, just moving your body. Your muscles release something called myokines. Myokines have been shown to downregulate NFKB throughout the whole body. So going out and just taking a walk, super critical for downregulating this inflammatory cascade. If you're just laying around, you're sedentary, you're actually doing your body worse favor. Now there are times to be resting, right? That is very important. You don't want to overtrain or over move, but you definitely need some level of movement, some level of muscle contractions throughout the day to get inflammation under control. Nature, just getting out in nature. I recommend getting out, if you can, barefoot, grass, dirt, sand, um, being exposed to the ground, the natural healing electromagnetic frequencies from the ground. They basically like shower off our body's electromagnetic frequency, which reduces stress on our system, and that allows us to heal and adapt better. You can also go out in the woods. You can go for a hike out in the woods, and the trees are releasing a healthy electromagnetic frequency that's really helpful for your body. There's also essential oils, natural essential oils that come from uh, plants, and we're when we're breathing them in because we're out in nature, that's gonna be really helpful for our system. That's gonna help downregulate inflammation. You know, obviously you can get essential oils and you know, essential oils have been well documented to help bring down inflammation. And the reason why is because these are kind of natural scents that we would get in nature. And when we're out in the woods, when we're taking a hike on, on a mountain or whatever it is, we're being exposed to these things and they have a calming effect on our system, really support the immune system, help modulate and balance the immune system. And so very key, okay, and you can also have essential oils diffusing in your house. So you're breathing that in, right? Almost trying to mimic nature. Now, it's not quite the same as getting time in nature. You're not getting the change in the electromagnetic frequency, but at least you're getting these, these essential oils into your system, which calm and balance your nervous system, can help calm inflammation in general. So that's really key. Um, obviously, we talked about the sun exposure you get when you're in nature. Reducing your toxin exposure. So doing your best to replace whether it's you know hygiene products that maybe have a lot of chemicals in them, um, just reducing your overall exposure to chemicals. If you're in a moldy home, getting out of that home, um, whatever you can to reduce the overall exposure to toxic chemicals, that's gonna help improve your body's ability to adapt and function better. And then increasing nutrients, right? And so again, if you're deficient in nutrients, whether it's vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, amino acids, B vitamins, whatever it is, getting good quality nutrients in your body. Maybe it's, um, it's antioxidants, right? In fact, you know, we talked about NFKB. Some of the best things to downregulate NFKB are things like omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, um, turmeric or the active compound in turmeric curcumin, which has been well studied to help downregulate NFKB. And the higher the NFKB is firing, the larger the dosage you may need to bring that down. Resveratrol, another compound that's been well studied to bring down NFKB. Quercetin, another great compound for that. N-acetylcysteine, or anything that's gonna help boost glutathione. Another, another great thing to help bring down 
the NFKB. Even zinc, selenium, if you're deficient in those kind of compounds, they're gonna help bring down NFKB. So getting the right nutrients on board as well, making sure that the food you're consuming is food that's gonna help support your body, that your body responds well to, very important for bringing down inflammation in general. So ultimately, you know, to summarize that, inflammation is a life-saving process, but when the overall allostatic load on our body gets too much and we're not able to adapt, repair, and heal, we get stuck in what we call the cell danger response, which triggers this self-amplifying cycle of inflammation in our body. We've got to address it. It's not overly complicated. It's focusing on things basically that help to calm our nervous system and trigger compounds within our body, like human growth hormone, for example, and uh, different anti-inflammatory pathways, different immune balancing pathways that bring inflammation down under control so we can then adapt, heal, and repair properly. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my channel, browse the various videos that I've done on similar topics, and also make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button, that way you get notified whenever I put up a new video training. Thanks so much for being a part of our community here, and I really hope you enjoy the videos that we're putting out on a regular basis. Be blessed.